It is my great pleasure to present you this video entitled What is Fibromuscular Dysplasia? What is Fibromuscular Dysplasia has been designed for all patients with Fibromuscular Dysplasia, FMD and their family. It is mainly designed for newly diagnosed patients or patients who have received little information on the disease so far. To others, it may seem quite basic, but still, I think everybody will find something useful. It may be also a resource for younger healthcare professionals not familiar with the disease. It is not there to explain the progress of research, but rather the clinical basic as of today November, December 2021. The knowledge may evolve over time. This is a large vessel to the right of the aorta. The organ to the left or to the right of the subject is the kidney and between both is the right renal artery. Arteries are blood vessels that lead oxygenated blood to the organ. What you can see here is a normal renal artery. It leads blood to the kidney. This presentation is about a specific arterial disease. There are many arterial diseases. The best known arterial disease is atherosclerosis. It is mostly due to unhealthy lifestyle and cardiovascular risk factors, cholesterol, hypertension, smoking, obesity. Most people you hear about with myocardial infarction or stroke, they have an arterial disease due to atherosclerosis. This presentation is not about atherosclerosis, it is about fibromuscular dysplasia, a less frequent but underestimated arterial disease typically found in young middle-aged women. Please find here a basic fact sheet about fibromuscular dysplasia, which from now on I will call FMD according to the acronym. While FMD was for long considered as a rare disease, it has been shown that 3 to 6 percent of apparently healthy subjects have renal FMD lesion. This was shown in study of candidate kidney donors, and it may reflect the prevalence in the population. Whether this person with asymptomatic lesion will develop over disease is not known. Still, it suggests that FMD is not really a rare disease. Also, FMD is typically found in young middle-aged women. The mean age of patients with FMD, however, in contemporary registries, is 50 to 55 years. FMD may also be found in children, both boys and girls. In men, 10 to 20 percent of cases more focal form, we explain this a little later, and even in older patients. So FMD affects predominantly young middle-aged women, but can be found in both gender at all age of life. <coughs> this is a typical lesion of FMD. It is called the string of beads. It is a series of alternating dilation and stenosis, stenosis meaning narrowing. In fact, there are two types of FMD. The most typical and by far the most frequent, 80-90% of cases, is multifocal FMD, characterized by the string of beads I have just shown you. 10 to 20% of patients have focal FMD characterized by a focal narrowing. This subtype of FMD is difficult to distinguish from atherosclerosis 
an other rare inflammatory and inherited arterial disease. The diagnosis has to be confirmed by specialist. Besides the string of beads for multifocal FMD and the focal stenosis for focal FMD, patients with FMD also often have dissection, at least 15 to 20 percent of case, aneurysm, at least 20 to 20 percent, 5 percent of case, and arterial tortuosity, that is kinking, loops, etc. However, these lesions do not suffice to make the diagnosis. If you have had a dissection, an aneurysm, tortuosity, you do not necessarily have FMD. In the absence of string of beads, this lesion may be due to other disease or occur in the absence of a known underlying disease. Now we will take them one by one. First, what is a dissection? The dissection that tear in the arterial wall. It may cause narrowing or occlusion of the arteries. <coughs> the consequence depends on the affect arterial bed, that is, the affected vessel. For example, a carotid dissection may cause a stroke. This is a potentially one of the severe consequences of FMD while a renal artery dissection may cause a renal infarction, that is, that part of the kidney may not work anymore. Aneurysm is widening of an artery, not a moderate widening, which could be called dilation, but a widening of more than 50% of the normal arterial diameter. Aneurysm may rupture, Again, the consequence depends on the affected artery. For example, a rupture of a cerebral aneurysm may lead to hemorrhagic stroke. Arterial tortuosity is not a medical problem per se. It may be due to many factors such as older age or hypertension. However, especially when found in young women, it may help give a hint to the diagnosis of FMD. The most typical presentation is the carotid S-curve, and you can see here the S, typical of arterial tortuosity named S-curve. While most physicians have learned about FMD as a rare cause of narrowing of renal arteries. FMD may in fact affect most arteries of the body. The most often affected arteries are renal and cerebrovascular artery. But FMD of brachial, visceral, iliofemoral artery also exists, and I will speak about the coronary artery a little later. Also importantly, more than half of patients with FMD have more than one affected arterial bed. This is called multivessel FMD. This is not the same as multifocal FMD. Multifocal FMD is a predominant subtype of FMD characterized by the string of beads. Multivessel FMD simply means that more than one arterial bed is affected by FMD and this is the case in more than half of patients. A few examples of the consequence of FMD, string of beads or focal stenosis of the renal artery may cause high blood pressure, that is arterial hypertension. And you know that untreated arterial hypertension may be at the origin of serious vascular complication. Also, patients with FMD have more often headache, especially migraine, and pulsatile tinnus, tinnitus, often described as whooshing or swooshing in the ears. These symptoms may lead to the diagnosis of FMD, especially in young women with hypertension and or a cervical bruit at clinical examination. But again, many young women 
will have some of these without having FMD. But in case several of these symptoms are associated, we may consider the diagnosis of FMD. More seriously, cerebrovascular FMD may be complicated by a stroke, for instance due to a carotid dissection, or more rarely to rupture of a cerebral aneurysm, that is a breach in the carotid artery, or rupture of a dilation of a cerebrovascular artery. If FMD affects digestive arteries, for example the mesenteric artery, it may be at the origin of pain after eating, unexplained or unintended weight loss. If it affects the arm and leg artery, it can, in some rare case, be at the origin of pain in legs after walking or exercise. However, most cases of FMD, this you should remind, are and probably will remain uncomplicated. So FMD may be at the origin of serious complication, particularly hypertension, carotid dissection, stroke, but as I've said at the beginning, many will also remain asymptomatic. I've shown you that many patients with FMD have multivessel FMD. That means they can have string of beads in two or more vessels, or they could have one string of beads and somewhere else an aneurysm or a dissection which may require management or close follow-up. This is why the writing committee of the international consensus on FMD, which we have led with Professor Gorning in Cleveland, has stated that regardless of initial site of vascular bed involvement, all patients with fibromuscular dysplasia should undergo at least once a lifetime a vascular scanning from brain to pelvis. And this could be done by CT angiography, CTA, or if contraindicated, MR angiography, MR. This may allow to show additional string of beads and more importantly, dissection of aneurysm. Another entity potentially related to FMD is spontaneous coronary artery dissection, also called SCAT. In the word spontaneous coronary artery dissection, you find the word coronary artery. Coronary artery are the arteries that surround and supply the heart. Then we find the word dissection. Dissection means a breach in the artery. Spontaneous coronary artery dissection is a breach in one of the coronary arteries, the arteries that surround and supply the heart. It can therefore be at the origin of a myocardial infarction, what we call currently a heart attack. So it's a special cause of myocardial infarction that is not due to atherosclerosis, to come back to our discussion at the beginning of this presentation, and it occurs mostly in young or middle-aged women, as FMD, in fact, is typically found in young middle-aged women. And there is clearly an association between SCAD and FMD, or at least FMD lesions, indeed, 30 to 60 percent of patients with CAT, that is the spontaneous coronary artery dissection, have lesions indistinguishable from multifocal FMD in extracoronary arterial beds, that is the string of beads, and they have also other arterial abnormalities. In this image you can see to the right, in fact left of the image, but in the right renal artery a string of beads and to the left, that is to the right of the image, a splenic aneurysm. Why do I say indistinguishable from multifocal FMD? Because we have no histological demonstration that it's the same disease, but even the best expert will say that's FMD. 
These lesions are important to detect, but they tend to be milder and have less adverse consequence than in patients with FMD in the absence of SCAD. In other words, if you have survived a myocardial infarction due to SCAD, due to dissection of a coronary artery, you may have other extracoronary arterial abnormality, for example, string of beads. But these lesions tend to be seldom at the origin of severe complications. Furthermore, in patients primarily diagnosed with FMD, SCAD is very rare. So in other words, lesions, FMD-like lesions, are frequent, but probably usually of a good prognosis in patients with SCAD. But if you have FMD, FMD of renal artery, carotid artery, it is unlikely that you will develop a SCAD. This happens, but it is very rare. However, in view of the association of SCAD with multifocal FMD lesion, similarly to what is recommended for FMD, patients with SCAD should undergo at least once a lifetime CT angiography or, if contraindicated, MRM angiography from brain to pelvis. The diagnosis of FMD may be suspected by Doppler ultrasonography. Quite suggestive are turbulence in the vessel in the mid to distal part of the artery. That is the artery for the renal artery remote from the aorta and near to the kidney, because this is a usual location of multifocal FMD, the string of beads. Still, this is not absolutely specific, and you will not always find this. And renal duplex is difficult and needs a lot of expertise. In some cases, as you can see here in the cartoon, you can even see the string of beads. But believe me, this is very rare. So, the diagnosis of FMD needs to be confirmed by CT or MR angiography. In most cases, renal duplex or carotid duplex are not enough. These exams, that is a CT and MR angiography, are increasingly considered as first-line diagnostic tool. So, I see quite a lot of patients with severe hypertension, young women, they, they are said, okay, you don't have FMD because your renal duplex was negative, but if the index of suspicion is high, this is not enough. It is better to go to CT or MR angiography. Catheter-based angiography is considered by physicians as a gold standard, but is an invasive exam and therefore, it is usually reserved to cases in which angioplasty is deemed necessary. Angioplasty, as we will see a little later, may lead to cure or improvement of hypertension in case of renal FMD. And also, the physician will recur to catheter-based angiography in some unclear case, where again the suspicion is high, but CT or MR angiography did not give an unambiguous response. As for renal FMD, imaging and diagnosis of cerebrovascular FMD usually re requires CT or MR angiography. Carotid duplex is usually not enough to rule out cerebrovascular FMD because it will miss part of carotid FMD, which may be very distal, that is at the entrance of the skull, far from the aorta. It will miss most cases of vertebral FMD, and it does not allow to detect cerebral vascular aneurysm that may be associated. Medical management of FMD is currently based on expert opinion. For sure, in case of hypertension, blood pressure should be very well treated with antihypertensive treatment. 
Treatment of migraines may be needed as well, but vasoconstrictive agents are to be avoided. Low-dose aspirin is usually recommended, especially in case of dissection or severe cerebrovascular FMD, but needs to be discussed on a case-by-case -case basis. Finally, several data suggest that smoking is associated with progression of FMD and or an increased risk of aneurysm, and therefore quitting smoking is particularly recommended in patients with FMD. Now, what about angioplasty? I have already alluded to this. Angioplasty is endovascular dilatation, that is dilatation from within the vessel of a narrow arterial segment by an endovascular balloon. In hypertensive patients with renal artery, especially young patients with a recent diagnosis of hypertension, angioplasty deserves to be seriously considered. Angioplasty may improve blood, blood pressure control or even cure hypertension. Angioplasty should be considered, I have said it already, in case of FMD-related artery stenosis, particularly if hypertension, the acronym is HTN, of recent onset or occurring in young patients, but also in case of medical treatment failure, what doctors call resistant hypertension. There are also more marginal indications. The kidney shrinks in size or renal function decreases over time, but this is relatively rare. More importantly, you certainly know people who had a myocardial infarction, a classical one, and a narrowing of coronary artery was found, and they had dilatation with stenting. Also in atherosclerotic renal artery stenosis, stenting is sometimes considered. But in case of FMD, of renal artery FMD, stenting is usually contraindicated due to an increased risk of complication, that is thrombosis, kinking, or even stent rupture. So in most cases, is angioplasty without stenting that is recommended. When to consider open surgery for renal FMD? Well, nowadays, open surgery is limited to repeated failure of renal angioplasty. Complex lesions of FMD of the arterial bifurcation or branches and stenosis associated with complex aneurysm. Yearly indefinite follow-up is recommended for most patients with FMD. In case renal angioplasty has been performed, surveillance with renal artery duplex ultrasound is recommended usually within one month post-angioplasty, every six months for one year, and then on a yearly basis. FMD is not a genetic disease, it has for sure a genetic component that is more and more study, but the really familiar cases are rare, according to the registry, 2 to 7%. So what we do in the family, we do not recommend systematic screening, but we ask about comorbidities, suggestive symptoms of FMD in first degree or other relative, that is all we have described, hypertension, stroke, subarachnoid hemorrhage, pulsatile tinnitus, recurrent migraine, history of aneurysm or dissection, and we recommend an exploration only in case of suggestive symptom of medical history. This is now the end of the presentation. I'm sure you have many questions. I hope you have some answer. I think it's a basis for discussion with your physician, your healthcare practitioner, maybe your family. This presentation has been prepared for you by the European International FMD Registry and Initiative, named FERI, in tight collaboration with the European FMD Patient Network, EuroFMD, and you can see here the website, the multilingual website. I am deeply indebted to Mrs. Kathleen Jamison for coordinating EuroFMD and for supporting us, the physician in Europe and beyond. 
and we are also very, very grateful to the FMD Society of America, FMDSA, which is an example for us, and especially for Mrs. Pam Meigs for making this possible. Thank you very much for your attention.